Dear Gail, thank you so much for writing to us. I'm just now having such a difficult time knowing what to write. My words seemed all mixed up to me, and I want to tell you all the wonderful things about my wife, but I really don't know where to begin. I always felt like I was the luckiest man in the world to be married to her. I first met Marcy back in 1991. Uh, she was uh, working at a flight school that I had been an instructor at. I noticed that this uh, cute young lady behind the counter, and uh, so I struck up a conversation with her, and uh, we talked for just a few minutes that first meeting. Here's up in northern Minnesota. Mom and I were uh, up there probably looking at the waterfalls up there, I would say. Yeah. And uh, we moved on to winter, and this is uh, where I took her down the uh, a double black diamond. She would go fishing in Canada with her brothers and dad. Um, she was a downhill skier. And we would go around and we'd ride on the motorcycle and we would go to concerts. She was, she was, she was fun. She was just a beautiful person. She. Um, had a heart of gold. She was kind and caring. Marcy was a neonatal intensive care nurse. She could see people's needs and she had those eyes that would make people feel at ease and you could just see her compassion. She loved church. She was going to become a nun at one point and um, really studied that. And, and But we knew she wanted, I knew she wanted to be a mom. She wanted to have a family. Bless us, O Lord, in these high gifts, which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. It definitely translated into motherhood. She would do anything for those kids. Uh, just total self-sacrifice for her kids. Beautiful day, just a beautiful sunny uh, Minnesota day. The kids wanted to go swimming, so we did some swimming. We had some kayaks, we did some kayaking, and then it was time to go to uh, water ski. Many people took turns water skiing, and uh, it was Marcy's turn to water ski. She popped right up out of the water like she always would. She let go of the rope, and then she slowly went back into the water. Me and my brother Mike dived off the dock, uh, swam out to her, and then she was brought up onto the dock, and CPR and everything was uh, started from there. I remember distinctly my someone, my aunt or my uncle or someone yelling to the neighbors, like, call 911 now, and that was, and that was right when they also said to my cousin, like, take him into the house. We played checkers, but we weren't really playing checkers. We were thinking about what's going on with mom. She wasn't really breathing on her own, so I was doing the breathing while her sister did most of the chest compression. So it was very um, disturbing, very distraught, but it was the only thing that we could keep doing, or the way I felt, the only thing I could keep doing is trying to, you know, keep her body going. So after the doctor came in to talk to us, we knew that it was uh, time or we, I had this discussion with her family. So we're all able to go in and, and uh, spend our last moments uh, with Marcy. I got to the point where I realized that it wasn't all about me. God wanted to take her home. And that was gonna be the best thing for Marcy to go home. Even though that many years have passed, you never, you never, 
um, may never forget them. You, you always you learn to live, but with a little piece of your own heart gone. This is the plate that Michael sent to me on Mother's Day, May 19th, 2010. Dear God, you granted me a beautiful mom who helped me every step of the way, but then you called her back to her real home. And I was very sad. And I was left here knowing that her heart beats in three places, in me, in Gale, and in heaven. I'm proud of how happy her soul is in the right place. Also, you, Gail, you seem so much like Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Love, Michael. That kind of says it all, doesn't it? She's an A-type personality of anybody who knows her. I love her beauty. I love her charisma. She's a go-getter um, from day one, and you can't keep up with her. Great friends and great relationships through her business and personal life. It was a beautiful day, was it not? Here's all reason we fight to stay healthy. You watch Gail go from a vibrant gal to just slowing down. I knew something was wrong, and so on the seventh doctor I went to, she looked at everything and said, no, no, I think there's something in your heart. Within 24 hours, they had the diagnosis that I had viral myocardiopathy, and that started my journey for my heart. Yeah, you know, we went from a, a, a pacemaker device to another surgery. And as you see each of these surgeries, this is just leading up to her heart failure, um, you, you just have great concern. And with a weak heart, her vital organs were not getting the nutrition that they needed. Without a transplant, her survival would be unlikely. I was too sick to stay at home and then began my journey to live in the hospital until a heart came. I remember the date um, on August 2nd. I'd been there and I actually was heading home. I got the phone call. And they had this crown and they said, we think today is gonna be your day. Gail, we have a match. And just the emotions, you still can't um, get used to because there's this precious gift of life. There's hope that someone out there who loses a loved one finds it in their heart to be able to share the most invaluable gift of life. It was a huge opportunity filled with hope, but at the same time, pretty frightening. I placed my hands over the cooler and prayed. We pray, oh God, that you would use the doctors, the nurses, the entire team, and bless Gail with this new heart, amen. I knew our team would have her back. We would support her. While there's only one living person, there's actually two lives that have continued because of a heart transplantation. It is an unfathomable responsibility. There is no reason to go anywhere other than St. Luke's. We have the best hospital in the world here. I can't imagine anything else out there that is as dramatic and as rewarding. The amount of joy that is there, and we were able to collaboratively help someone is amazing. The very first memory I had was my son. His face was right on the window and he had his hand up here. That was the first thing I saw when I woke up and I said, I think I'm alive. There is such a relief and such a joy for us from 2000 to even yesterday. Uh, the number of people that have been in this journey with us, supporting us, 
We were lucky that we were here in town with such a great hospital. I was confident that she would continue to embrace life as she always had, but yet also now taking on embracing the gift of life she received by honoring her donor for the years to come as well as her donor's family. Somebody else had given up their heart and it is in me. I talked to her a lot that very first day. I was like, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm honoring you. I'm so sorry your family's so sad. So I said, how can I reach out to these people? They said, well, you can write a note and deliver it to us, and then we'll deliver it to them. Phone rings and he said, Gail, this is Tom. I just fell to the floor at Michael's and I said, Tom, you know, he said, the kids and I are ready to come see. And the rest is history. Definitely, I wanted to connect with her. That was a part of Marcy that was living her heart, that was still living. It just made so much sense. For me, it was completely life-changing. She definitely took um, special time with me to see and, and hear uh, her new heart, my wife's old heart. It is the gift of life. It allows people like Gail to continue to enjoy their family, their work, see their grandbabies. There is not one patient that does not have an amazing story. I think Marcy and I have had a good life together as we share something that nobody else can share. We're now a huge extended family. There's a piece of my mom with her always. It does feel like she's there with us. I think that can be a gift, especially for Gail to have 17 more years of life. I can see my wife is still giving after all these years. And as God would have it, I will always engage one day to the green grass of the meadow on the other side. May God bless you for your courage, Gail. Sincerely, Tom. You have to appreciate every moment that you have.